Welcome back to Truck U. Today we're working on the toy hauler. Now the name of the game is at the brakes and what we're going to do is go from electric drum to hydraulic disc. We're going to do that. We're just about ready to put on our new brakes from Kodiak, but while we've got them out, we can kind of take a look at things and look at some of the advantages that this system will have over the old system. And the biggest advantage, it's all about safety when you talk about braking. Now this braking system here is going to give you up to a 50% decrease in your stopping distance over that electric uh, braking assembly, right. which is huge. I mean, that's the difference quite frankly, of getting in an accident and stopping safely, and that's what it's all about. For the little bit more you're going to pay up front for this, it's well worth it. Yeah, peace of mind if nothing else. Now, when we had the old one out too, we saw all those moving parts and all the things that could go wrong. You take a look at this. Look at the number of moving parts. There's one. It's the piston that pushes that all together and clamps down. That's all there is. It's a much simpler system, and simpler and better. Now, the folks at Kodiak, which is nice, they stand behind their product. They've got a limited lifetime warranty on these ceramic brake pads. What happens? You wear one out, you send them to them, they send you a new set. It doesn't get any easier than that. You know, these are being used by a majority of the axle manufacturers, and we're talking about guys that, that are running, you know, axles 2,000 pounds, up to 12,000 pounds. So whatever you're going to be hauling around, these guys are going to take care of you. Yeah, it'll fit your application. It's pretty simple to use. I'm going to go ahead and drop these bearings, and we can go and get these rotors on. All right, dude. I'll get this one over. Try not to kill my other finger. <laughs> I got nine left. <laughs> All right, our bearings are packed, our seals are in place. Now what we need to do, last thing, is go ahead and hit the contact surface on the rotors and the pads with a little brake parts cleaner to make sure we get any grease that we might have there off the surface so these things will grab right. You already got the back side done. Now you want to put the rotor on. Be careful when you put it on that the bearing doesn't come out. Put your thumb there, keep it in place. It'll slide on like so. Then you've got your big washer here and your spindle nut. Now the whole idea behind the spindle nut is you want to tighten it down but you don't want to over tighten it. And the reason being is because if you do, you're going to lock up the bearing and that's not going to be good when you eat the bearing. So this will bottom out, and you'll back it off about a quarter of a turn. Once you do that, you should be good to go. Once we get that in place, we can reach around here and put the caliper in, sneak around here and get that in place. Now the good thing is, the bolts already had thread locker on them, and another thing to keep in mind is all the bolts in the hardware are already stainless, so you don't have to worry about any corrosion. But if you want a whole stainless kit, you can get that from Kodiak as well. Maybe you live on the coast and you've got a big boat trailer and you're dipping it in and out of the salt water. You don't want to have to worry about the corrosion. So, hey, that's one more thing. Maybe you just like the looks of the stainless system. A lot of guys like that. So we'll get these bolts in here. We'll torque them down to about 40 pounds, and then we can get to work on those brake lines. All right. You got it there? Yeah, that's 40 foot right. pounds. Cool. All right, so what we do with the brake line is once we got a piece that's 16 and a half feet long, that's quarter inch in diameter. And the reason why we did that is because even though it's a little more money, it's better to do it that way because you don't have all those little connections. Every time you've got a connector, you have an opportunity for it to leak and for it to fail. You lose brake fluid, well, you're in trouble. Yeah, you got problems. Now that brings us back to about this point right about here. Now at this point, what we'll do is we'll tee off another one right the same way across the side of the trailer. So quarter inch, same size. We'll go across to the other side and then we'll tee off with the three sixteenths right about here. Now this will sneak up to that end, this will sneak down to that end. Now at the end of this, that's when we'll hook on this flex line right here. So what we're going to do with the flex line here, once we get that all done, is route this to each individual caliper. Now make sure you use DOT approved flex line. And make sure you, you use the flex line because if you use a rigid line with floating calipers, you're asking for trouble. This will give and it'll allow for the calipers to float and for the axles to move so you know you'll be covered. Phase number one of our brake job on the trailer is done with the Kodiak system, so that's all set. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the brake right actuator from Titan. I just purchased a new vehicle. How can I keep my fuel injector nozzles clean? We'll find out after the break. 